So we're going to be tying up a side end pattern here. Um, this is all made out of one material, yak in different colours, um, and vis invisible tabs with an 8mm eye. Um, hook wise, SL12 4 and you can use your favourite hook, but in this case, I need to use a 4 SL12. Um, pretty straightforward pattern. Now, the only thing I won't be showing you is how I seal in the eyes. Um, so, what I use is Gorilla Glue Crystal Clear and dome it onto the eyes, onto the tab, and onto the thread on both sides. And I put in a dry rotate, a uh, fly drying rotator for um, a couple of hours. Um, you can use UV glue. There is a video that I've done on YouTube as well on using um, the invisible tabs and sealing in the eyes using UV glue. Um, fortunately, I don't really use UV glue much anymore because uh, it makes me quite ill. Um, I've create, I've got kind of an adverse reaction to it. Um, adverse reaction, should I say? So, um, I don't really use um. UV glue that much anymore and if I do it's very well ventilated um, or outside. Um, I think I've already said the thread is a 210 Danville flat waxed um, also like uh, uni um, nylon 210. It's not waxed but um, still nice and flat and nice and strong. So with the yak you don't need a lot. Um, all the tie points are folded back over themselves to lock them in. Um, so your material will be doubled every time you put it on. Um, so generally speaking, on a Fly 4 I'd be using 25 to 30 strands at a go, um, maybe even less. Um, so Yak is not tapered, um, although this one has short ends. Um, yak itself is not a tapered fiber, so you can cut off. This is a 12 inch Yak. You can cut off four inches and then pre-taper it with your fingers into a six inch pile with nice tapered tips and um, just by pulling out the uh, the ends and um, before you tie it in. Um, so with the tail I tend to tie short to the back longer to the front so about 40 percent 60 percent and so that when you fold it over, you get longer tips. Now you don't need to pre-taper. You don't need to pre-taper yak. Um, you can tie it in and in straight clubs and then trim it to death. But uh, I find it speeds up your tying if you pre-taper it. Um, and you also get a slightly bit of better profile, I think, because they get a get the different lengths going through. Um, personal preference, anyways. Um, so I folded that back on itself, I should have said, and locked it down. Um, the glue I'm using to lock it down is Golf Eco. Um, again, I'm not affiliated with Golf. I just like their uh, Eco varnish. Uh, it doesn't smell. It's water-based. Um, kind of slow drying, so you don't have to worry about it sticking your fingers together. Um, and yeah, soaks in nicely. So um, I'm going to start creating a bit of a belly on the next tie-in point. So I've pulled the thread slightly forward and for the belly, because it's going, this is going on the belly, it's a slightly shorter bunch, so about three inches. And I'm going to pre-taper it to about four inches. Now, first tie-in point ended there on the belly. So we're going to make this one a touch shorter. So these are the belly ones all go in pretty much 50 50 um, there's not 60 40 or anything like that going in so you just pull it make sure it's even on either side of the shank and I'm just locking the tie point down with um, three or four wraps of thread just need a bit more white there and need a slightly longer bunch for this next tail bit so this is about five inches that will be stretched out to close to seven inches. Now again, with this one, because we're building in a taper, the tips are going to be longer to the back and shorter to the front. So we start creating that teardrop taper, as you can see. 
So again, just tying it straight on top of the belly ties. I'm going to fold it back with my fingers. So that's my thumb and forefinger, just pushing it back and then using my other hand to stroke the fibers and then have a bit of a squeeze. Again, like bucktail, you want it kind of up against the, uh, the tie-in point. And then on two wraps is all you need to kind of lock it down really. We're gonna add a couple more. So we've got a bit more dolphin. There we go. So again, bring it forward three or four wraps again. Just going to, as you can see, you get that nice bit of taper. It's so like I said, all it does is it just speeds up the tying a little bit. Uh, oh, there's my belly stuff. Tips are getting scraggly on this bit of white, so I'm just going to split it. Make sure it's about even again. Pre-taper those tips. Lay it down. Three wraps. Squeeze it a bit. I'm going to start adding a bit of colour here. So I'm going to take a bit of tan. Tan yak. Again, about 30, 40 strands. Fold it over. This is 12 inch yak. So I'm folding it over. So I've got two six inch bunches. Then I'm going to take a bit of yellow, which is actually a short yak. It's only six inches long. And I'm going to lay it on top. So I've got a yellow. You can see it on the camera. A tan and a yellow. About even amounts. And we're going to just blend the two together by pulling out the fibers by their tips, laying them back down on top of each other. Now again, if you wanted to add flash to this fly, you could do the same thing using polar flash or crafty flash, or even angel hair, any of the flashes really. Flashy view not so much, or crystal flash, because it will tend to go a bit funny. Um, polar flash and angel hair would be my favorite to add to yak. Once it's nicely mixed together, split it. So again, not huge amounts. Again, because it's been blended together, you've got nice tapered tips on there. And again, I'm going to shorten this a bit, take an inch off and just pre-taper that out a bit, just because we're building in that taper. There we go. Tie it all down. Now we're going to fold it back, same as a previous tie. So the back on these flies, obviously, pardon me, is slightly longer than the belly fibers. Again, that just creates a bit of a taper. There we go. Let's lock down in. So now, from the previous tie, from that previous blend, I've still got half a stack of mixed yellow and tan. And what I'm going to add to that is a little bit of chartreuse. Pulled out too much there. Keep that for the next tie. And again, I'm just going to blend the two. Now you could put straight chartreuse on there if you want. Um, the reason I like to do this is because you'll get a bit more of a color gradient. And again, I honestly don't think the fish cares, but I do when it comes to how they look on my vise. Um, again, we're going to have to shorten that a bit. Back down to about five inches or so. I forgot to tie my belly, so I'm going to do that first with my little bundle, same as before, no different, taper the tips. Now, each belly bundle gets progressively shorter 
So this is only a four inch bundle. Again, tied in 50-50, so it's, it's even. And then we're gonna take that little bundle that I prepared. It's probably a bit too dense. Take a couple of fibers out. I'm gonna lay that down like so. And then just brush in that back bit there. So that's your chartreuse, yellow and tan. So two layers kind of blend in towards each other a bit more rather than having harsh lines, which isn't quite as natural, I think. A little drop of UV, I mean, golf varnish on there, and stray fibre. How's that looking? I think that's looking pretty good. All right, we've got two more tie points to get into that last little bit. Don't worry, because that's how it is, it gets a little bit denser towards the head. So again, a little bundle of white. It's a bit long, trim it off there. There we go, right. Lay that down. Put it around that shank on my thumb a little bit. And then we need the chartreuse. So that's a bit of chartreuse there. Pre tape on that. There we go. Oops. Looking good. Fold that back. So that's a straight bundle of chartreuse. A couple of wraps. Lock that down, bring your thread forward. So that's your chartreuse layer. As you can see, profiles come in there quite nicely. Right, the last belly wrap is coming into play. It's a little bit long, trim it off. Lay that in. Go. Now we need our Avo Green. Just going to blend the Avo Green with a little bit of chartreuse. I pulled out earlier. It's not quite a 50-50 mix, this, it's uh, more 70 Avo, 30 Chartreuse. It's a little bit too much there. Do that back. Trim that off. Make it a bit shorter. There we go. Right, fold this back again, exactly the same as before. A couple of wraps to lock it down. Just using a toothbrush just to brush it out every now and then. Go with fibers to lay together. And then last but not least, I'm gonna add a little bit of black to the top. You don't need much. You don't need much black. 
this is just to top off the fly. I'll just spread it slightly with my thumb now on the top there, just so it's not all clumped. And brush it back. See how it goes. Kind of creates a little veil over the veil over the top. All right. I'm just going to tie this off there a second. Just have a little bit of a trim with the scissors before I pop on the eyes, just so that there's a nice bed. We'll finish trimming this in a second. But as you can see, nice little taper coming in there. Invisible tab time. Again, these are invisible tabs that have just been added to a flat 8 mil eye. Um, there is a previous YouTube video of how I do the eyes or do the tabs on the eyes. And again, all these do is make for a nice finish on the fly. Get the eyes nicely in place before they get UV'd or, in my case, Gorilla glued because I can no longer use UV. So I will probably update the video because it actually shows me using UV. There we go. Make sure they're nice and even, which it looks like they are. Yes, sir. Fold back those tab ends. Off. Take off that extra tab. It's folded back on itself. Oh. There we go. Just grab the light of that. Clean up that tag. So that's basically the fly there. As you can see, minimal trimming already. And we've got the, I mean, they're only trimmed. The, uh, the head, but pull out all the fibers. I'll just give it a little once over with a pair of scissors just to neaten up any of those straggly ends. So one cut on the belly. One cross across the back. And neaten up around the hook point. Oops. Like I said, minimal trimming because of the pre tapering. And that's it. Just add a bit of colour to the thread. So it's not that harsh white. Here you go. I don't think fish matters, but it matters to me in the vice. Right. I had a false eye with a permanent marker. There's one. Two. And that is your sardini pattern done. Out of yak. Now, the invisible tabs and eyes, like I said, you can either use UV have a look at the other video. Um, I use Gorilla Glue, so I coat the eye, the tab, and the thread all at the same time, both sides, and I put it in a fly turner or epoxy turner uh, for a couple of hours until it's dry. And that's it. Done. Thank you for watching. Any questions, give us a shout. Um, all these colours of yak are available on my website. Um, links in there in the description um, and so is the invisible tabs but uh, thank you bye